All right, so we're going to go over how to create a fake double exposure image using Adobe Photoshop CC. To do this, you're going to need to take a picture of somebody in front of a white wall. You're going to need to have a picture that's going to be used for the texture of that double exposure. So I've gone with this cityscape and you're going to need an image that has some good colour in it. So I've decided on this image of this paper cranes. But we're going to go back to that original first photo here that is going to be where most of the editing takes place. We're going to start by using the dodge tool which you can locate on the toolbar on the left hand side. Once you've selected the dodge tool, you need to make sure the range is set to highlights, the exposure is at 50% and protect tones, which will probably be selected when you go on this tool for the first time, uh, you'll need to unselect as well. You want to keep your brush size at about 380. Um, at the moment, that's what I'm going to work with with my photo, but just go with whatever works for your photo. Uh, you can make that smaller when you get a bit closer to the person, which I will do, but also just make sure it's a soft edge and not a hard edge. And all you need to do is go around the background with this dodge tool to make it fully white. What's good about the dodge tool when you do this is that it won't, um, like if you go over the hair or whatever, it will not disappear completely, um, especially when you use a smaller brush when you go near there. Um, which make, makes it look a bit more um, authentic. But if you do go over a lot of the person, it is very um, obvious. So we want to just go right up to the edge of the person. Like I said, you probably want to change the size of your brush um, when you get a bit closer to their um, hair and things like that. You'd probably zoom in um, and take your time doing this to make sure you really get it how you want it to look. And... Just keep going in there, getting what you want. This will all be um, pretty much covered by the double exposure as well. So there's no need to get too um, pedantic about how close you're getting to the edge, um, but you do want it to be kind of as clear as you can get it. So as to not to make it look too obvious. Just click in here as well. Just get that tiny bit there near the chin um, and that looks pretty good so once you've got a fully white background at the moment obviously that looks super um, obvious and doesn't look great so what we're going to do this will won't really matter when we get our next layer in so the first layer that we're going to um, bring in is our cityscape I've already edited this image into a black and white image but you can use a color image it doesn't matter or you can make it black and white if you like I'm going to click up back onto the um, move tool and click and drag, hover over the tab with your photo uh, in it, still holding down and then release it over the photo. And then you can resize and um, move that around as you see fit. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. When I'm resizing, I'm going to make sure I'm holding down shift so it doesn't go out of proportion. And then that, that should be okay for the moment. And then over here on the layers palette, you can see that um, we've got the background layer and then layer one, which is a layer that we just dragged in. If you can't see the layers palette, go to window and make sure layers is selected. When I'm clicking on layer one, I'm going to go up to this tab here that says normal, which is the layer property. I'm going to drag that down and I'm going to change that to screen. And you'll see now that you can see part of um, the image that we put in uh, the cityscape in. And so I'm going to find part of that that works well with my photo. I think this is working pretty well. You can also um, resize it so I can hold down shift and make it a bit smaller provided I don't go any smaller than the person. Um, so I can see more of the city if I like. I think I might leave it maybe here. Okay, so I'm happy with how that looks at the moment. Obviously, you can see that it's not looking great at the moment, but when we go to the end and start um, erasing some parts of that, it will look a lot better. You'll be able to see the person underneath as well. So once I'm happy with that, I'm just going to hit enter. And then I'm going to go across to the layers palette again, again and click on the uh, new adjustment layer tab down the bottom and click on gradient map 
Now you'll see gradient map creates a gradient color over your image. You can leave it on the default one if you like, um, or you can go through any of these options here and find one that you like. I'm going, you want to obviously keep, select one that will keep your background um, white. And I think I'm going to go with this one here, which is Cobalt Iron 1, but you can go through if you like and select a different gradient map. You can also have a look at these ones down here. I'm in photographic toning, but you can have a look at some other ones, but you need to make sure you choose one that will keep the background white. If you want to keep the colors of both your photos, um, then that you add on top of your background layer, then you don't need to do this step at all. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add in the paper cranes layer. So I'm going to go across to that tab, click and drag, hover over the layer that we're working on and then releasing it there. And you see that this is um, a higher quality image so it's really zoomed in. So I'm going to command minus to zoom all the way out and then I'm going to resize this holding down the shift key so it's closer to the size of the photo and then hit enter and then zoom back in so I can see what I'm working with. And again, I'm going to make sure layer two is selected on the layers palette, change the layer property to screen. And you'll see that you get um, the color from these cranes coming through onto that double exposure image. You can uh, rotate it if it's not working how you want it. I might rotate it slightly and bring it down. So you can see you're getting some of the good colors through the face area as well. And then once you're happy with that, hit enter on your keyboard again to place that layer uh, in your image. You need to make sure that this layer two is above the gradient map in order to get the color. If you don't want the color from layer two and you want the gradient map uh, color to be prevalent, then just put the level, level sorry, layer two below the gradient map and you'll see that the uh, only the texture from that photo will come through. But I obviously want the colors um, to come through, so I'm making sure that it's above the gradient map layer. Now at the moment, um, it's still hard to see the person's face underneath, so there's, we're gonna do two things to make that a bit more uh, predominant in the photo. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a new adjustment layer by clicking on the new fill or adjustment layer at the bottom of the layers palette. And then I'm going to go to curves and I'm going to do a really slight S bend curve by clicking first in this top right quadrant and slightly moving that up and then doing the same in the bottom left, dragging that down. And you'll see that um, the images get a bit more vibrant and um, higher contrast down the bottom when we do that bottom S bend point. I'm going to hide that away and you'll see that that appears above layer two in the layers palette. So now all that I need to do is at the moment you can see that the city um, is like right like a big building on her nose and you can't really see her face all that well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the eraser tool and I'm going to change it to a soft edged eraser and I'm going to hopefully that works there we go so I'm going to make it about 400 that's going to work well for my image it might not work well for your image but just do whatever works for you and I'm going to change the opacity to about 50% which means it's going to get rid of only half of the pixels um, half of the image and not all of it so not a full eraser that would be 100% so I'm going to click on the layer on the right hand side that has the cities and I'm just going to click once and you'll see that some of the city is erased. And I'm even going to go a bit up on her. Okay, maybe not high up. Um, on her hair a bit there as well. So it's a bit more prominent. And I'm also going to click on the layer with the swan. Uh, sorry, the um, paper cranes. And just go near where the eye is so you can see her face um, a bit more. And you can keep going until you get the bits that you want to see. Um, in the image and that often works a bit better if anything gets taken away that you don't you don't um, necessarily want um, in the image. So once you're happy with that, uh, all you need to do is go to file and save as 
and make sure you're saving it as a JPEG or save it as a Photoshop file if you want to keep re-editing in that and rename the image and save. Make sure the format's at JPEG and make sure it's on maximum and the quality is on 12 and you'll see how big the file size is there as well. Press OK and then you're done.